Welcome back to Nebulous Fleet Command. I'm showing off some maps in this video. There's a 1v1 tournament that's been organized by Blacklight on the Nebulous Fleet Command Discord. It's a 6,000 point 1v1 tournament. I think we have about 16 competitors. Uh, there's going to be quite a lot of rounds. It's a round robin tournament. And I've put my hand up to try and cast as many games as I can, just to try and give a bit of an overview of how the games work, see what different people are bringing to the board. 6,000 points gives people a lot to play with. But what I thought I'd do in this video is actually just go through the different maps that are available so we can see what players are going to play on. Now, there is a map selection process that the players will use when they choose their maps for each round. What will happen is they've got seven maps to pick from. Silent Citadel, which is this map here, Avora, The Belt, Pillars, Event Horizon, Cicada, and Luna. And they will one by one ban one of these maps until there's only one map left, and that is a map they will play on. So hopefully the players will be able to play on the map that they are least unhappy with. I think that's the way the system works. Um, all of the games will be done in control style, so you can see this is a control map, we've got five control points. And let's just have a quick look at Silent Citadel, and then we're going to have a look, go on and look at the other maps. Now, looking at where both teams start off, they're starting at about 50 astronomical units from each other. We've got quite a few large objects in the middle of the map that block line of sight, meaning that rail guns maybe won't have the easiest time, neither will long-range missile barrages, you're going to have to close into the middle of the map here to see your enemy. Looking at the way this is distributed, however, if we come up to the top, um, right from the red spawn side of the map, you can see that there is quite an open area here and maybe a ship sitting up in this area up here with rail guns would have quite good line of sight to anything sitting on B whilst being able to capture E. So this makes this quite a powerful side of the map from what I'm looking at. A is similar, but it is a little bit more cramped, but you do have these large, these smaller rocks that you can use to hide behind. And if we go down and have a look at D, it's quite a lot more cramped, probably better for corvettes or frigates to fly around in. And C is very, very well protected. Um, going to be quite hard to fight for this point if someone's taken it over. The large objects do give you a nice uh, battlefield to hide behind. You can tuck in close behind them. Um, probably not the view I wanted there. I'll use this ship here as my anchor point. And you can see we can come around here. There's lots of good little nooks and crannies to hide in. It looks like quite a cramped battle space in the middle here if we look at it outside the main view. So I think we'll have quite an interesting conflict coming up on this map. So there's six other maps to look at. This is the first one, Silent Citadel. And I'll have a look at the next one in just a second. Here is the next map that we have available to us. Unlike Silent Citadel, this has four capture points rather than five, making it a little bit lopsided towards the bottom of the map. This is Avora. It is a very large map, uh, same size as the last one, it just feels bigger, with a lot of large um, asteroids rocks in the center of the map, making it very cramped and very difficult to maneuver in. If you come in from this side here, you've got a very narrow entryway that probably makes this side a little bit more interesting. That is, I think, a little bit easier to come in from the red spawn than the blue spawn. It's a little less cramped. Um, looking at the points, B is obviously just in a very tight area in the middle of the map here. This is going to be a knife fight if there is ever one in this map. The only real way to see into this area is from this open space over here, which does give you get you a good view on B, so railgun ships might like to come here. This helps at red spawn as well. Just going around the middle, there is a spot over here, which is not as open for blue spawn, but it does exist. And if we come around to the other side, it really is quite hard to get good line of sight on B. C is down here. It's quite cramped again. You can't get direct line of sight on B or D, so this, this point can't see anything else. It's also not got great sight on the spawn as well. So again, probably a good spot for frigates or corvettes to sneak into. D down below, if we look up from below, you can see that we do get line of sight on B just from below the map. It's not particularly open. It's quite a good map for hiding from railguns, I think. The only downside I would say is the fact that A and is, is open to red spawn and B is also quite easy for red spawn to camp from this side here. And in fact, I can see very easily some railgun destroyers or railgun battleships just hiding behind this point here, popping up, firing off some shots, popping back down again. So maybe it's going to be quite difficult for that. I'm not going to say that this map is maybe balanced a little bit too much towards red spawn. We'll see if that shows up in the tournament. But it does look like this side may be a little bit harder to fight from than the blue side. All in all, it's quite an interesting map. There's a lot of interesting components in the fact that these asteroids are going to make long range fighting quite difficult. Torpedo barrages will also struggle, I think, in this area too. But I'm not super keen on the map. We'll see how it plays out in the tournament. We'll see how people, what people pick it. But I think we'll find it might get banned quite early just because of that very open B side from red. Coming over here gives you a lot of power, a lot of control over the battlefield. Next map we're going to look at is the belt, and we'll move on to that next. So the next map we're going to look at is the belt. It is a, again, five point capture point map. 
It looks a lot more mirrored than the last map we looked at, Avora. So there's similarities on both sides. Both spawns have a large object blocking most of you into B. Uh, then there's sort of a, a half mirror on how things are laid out on the left and the right. It looks like a very interesting map. There's a lot of open space in these quadrants above and below the plane of the battlefield where B is. We've also got capture point A up here. It does have line of sight down on B, making it a nice point spot to put a sniper that can hold A. Capture point E here is a little bit more hidden, but you can peek out to the right or the left to get line of sight on B, though it's a little bit tighter. You can also see D from here, which if you have a long range ship might be interesting. Down here we have C. C, like all the other maps so far, is completely blocked from the other sites to C, though you would get shots from D and C interacting with each other. And D is very much a mirror of C, not getting good line of sight on the other side. Interestingly, D is a little bit closer to red spawn. Both D and E are in fact a little bit closer to red spawn. So that is a slight advantage possibly to the team on that side. Although E is quite high up, D isn't too far off the plane. So you may find that D gets captured a little bit earlier by the red team. Uh, lots of open space in this map, but you've got good asteroids to hide behind. They are quite large. If we just would like to do is look at how cramped B is, because it is hard to see on this view just how tight this area is. And you do have very good line of sight into B. It's going to be very hard to hold B with a ship. Your best bet is probably to have a ship tucked in close to this asteroid here, maybe in this little crater here, where it can, whoops, that's a little bit too close, where it can maybe pop out and just keep this pop point holded. But I think this is going to be an interesting map. Hopefully the positions of D and E don't interfere with things too much, don't cause things to, to be balanced to one side. But we're going to have some pretty nasty fights. This is going to be more of a long range map by the looks of it, just with the better sight lines that are available. But there's some good opportunities for some good micro to keep your ships hidden, to keep your fleets moving, and some surprise attacks as well. It's, it's pretty easy to get ships up above and below the plane of this um, asteroid belt without worrying too much about them getting lost or getting stuck within, within enemy ships. So the next map we're going to have a look at is Pillars, and I'll just jump onto that one now. So this is Pillars, and Pillars is a map that comes with the game. It's not a modded map like the others. It has some really interesting geography to it that I really like to see. Uh, one of the things I really like is at the bottom of the map, there's this huge uh, fractured asteroid that pretty much protects the whole bottom of the map from underneath attacks, making it an unlikely angle of attack. Your opponent may not believe you're going to get approached from this angle, but there are some nice holes that you can sneak through to get into this map from here. There's also this really cool hole in a rock um, over by D. If we just turn the map of the camera around, we should be able to see it. There it is there. That you can hide some ships inside. It's got some, got some good cover on the edges here. I quite like that area too. And the, sh the map in general, we're sitting on B right now, the middle point is quite well shielded if I just spin around. There are line of sights in and out. There's also not a lot of cover in the middle, so it's quite open. You, you kind of, when I've been playing this map before, either end up with both teams sitting on the outside here, shooting into the middle at each other across the open space, or there ends up to be one fleet in the middle gets annihilated by a fleet on the outside, or they both head into the middle to have a knife fight. Actually, I did say I was on B. I was wrong there. A is the midpoint on this map. Um, it is in the lower quad quadrant down here. E and B are back here on red spawn, and D and C are on blue spawn, which leaves A as the only sort of neutral point in the middle of the map. So it can lead to some interesting tug of war battles where each team capture their safe capture points and then end up fighting over A. So C becomes the point that the blue fleet tends to launch its attacks into the middle of the map, and from here it doesn't have line of sight on A. It doesn't have, it has good line of sight on the main enemy approach into the um, but the pillars area, however, and then the enemy main attack point generally turns out to be B, which interestingly does have line of sight on A and is protected from C by this asteroid here. And you get some interesting fights developing from that. This is an OG map. Like I said, it came with the game. A lot of the players in this tournament will have played on this map a lot, as most of them are custom maps. I'm going to try and zoom quite far out to see if we get a better picture of the map. This is as far back as I can go. So you may find that this one is a popular one just because it's familiar, whereas the others are maybe a little bit more unfamiliar to people. But this is Pillars. I, I foresee it being a popular map. We'll see if I'm correct on that. I think it's pretty well balanced. It has some really cool terrain and it is, I should mention, quite open from the top, but not completely. And that plate at the bottom does make things interesting from attacks from below because I think a lot of people sleep on the fact that you can get under the map go all the way through here to get behind your enemy and get up into their capture area without being detected. It's great for a little Corvette to sneak around that way. But we'll move on to the next map, which is Event Horizon. Welcome to Event Horizon. Event Horizon is a custom map in looking to be in orbit of a gas giant. And it is very, very atmospheric. We've got this stellar wind or this gas 
that the that blows through the battlefield, making it hard to visually see enemy ships. So that won't affect your sensors. There are these large celestial bodies throughout the map, but not a lot of cover. It's very, very open. It almost feels, reminds me of a Company of Heroes style map where you've got these steps of cover that move towards the middle of the map. And I can see there being some very brutal long range fights. Most of the asteroids are below the plane of the level. Not that the plane really means a lot, but A is centered on this plane. So you probably have a lot of ships sneaking up behind rocks, popping up, shooting and popping back down again, which is gonna really test the micro of any players fighting on this map. The central area is clear of these um, gas rings that spiral around this this body over here. So probably you'll find people just tend to move into this area because it is a bit easier to see, even though it won't affect their ships. And just like pillars we looked at before, both sides have a safe, two safe capture points and then a, a contested capture point in the middle. Interestingly, C, E and A are very close to each other, which means that I can see this being a very, very bloody battlefield when things get engaged because we're going to end up very close to each other with very little cover. I can see some players really wanting to play on this map because railguns are going to be extremely effective on it, but I can see a lot of other players not wanting to. One of the biggest dangers about this map that I can think of is that because there's very little um, objects to provide blocking of line of sight, any elant um, corvettes that come high above the plane and low below the plane of the level will find themselves able to pick up enemy radar very, very easily, giving targeting locations to either, again, long range rail guns or for missile barrages to be fired off. And that may put a lot of people off the map. It does look pretty cool though. It is very striking. It is very different from everything else we've seen so far in the game, which is awesome to see. And I would really like to see some fights on this map, but I'll be surprised if it doesn't get banned very, very early. The next map we're gonna have a look at is Cicada. This is Cicada, a map that instantly reminds me of Evora with the very broken up, densely packed asteroids. But the most interesting thing about it is actually the fact that there are only three capture points on this map. It is a straight up tug of war. Each side gets a very easy to capture point near their spawn if they touch to come in on the plane of the level. And then right in the middle here is point A, um, which is surrounded by these asteroids. If we just sit in the middle of point A, you can see there's no line of sight to point C, no line of sight to point B. We do have this large body here, which does provide a nice peak point around to A and also looking almost out onto C, which is quite nice for um, red team to have. They can also come up above the plane of the level. You can see it does open up quite a lot if you come up here. You get some good sight lines on the enemy capture points on both sides. If we have a look from blue spawn, I think it's pretty much the same mirror. You're blocked on the plane of the level, but if you come up, you do have line of sight through, and it's pretty much the same from below as well. So whilst we've got quite a straightforward arrangement of capture points, what we do have is a very complicated battlefield because you can obviously range out to the right here from blue spawn. You've got good line of sight on A and B, and if you come out mirror, mirror that on the other side, it's very open from the sides, but very blocked straight on. So it will reward the savvy commander that moves their ships out on the um, right or left flanks of their spawn just to try and get a surprise on the enemy. Similar to pillars, there is a large object blocking a lot of the top of the map so nobody can get really on top and shoot down, but it does give you an avenue to sneak a ship up and over the top if you manage to get it up there without the enemy detecting it and come up behind them. Coming down from below, you do have very good line of sight up again, and it's an interesting proposition. I feel that this map would be a bit of a headache. I think it'd be very fun to fight on, but I can see myself, at least personally, getting surprised a lot because there's lots of avenues for ships to slip around and get into a good firing position before revealing themselves, and that might cause some problems. All in all, a cool map. I think there's going to be some games on this map. The fact that there are only three capture points does make it quite simple to play on, and I think a lot of people will like that very much. Uh, next up, we've got Luna, which is the last map in the map pack available for the 1v1 tournament, and uh, I'll have a look at that one next. All right, welcome to Luna. As you can see, Luna is a very different map from the others we've looked at. Luna is actually a map of the landscape of a moon. This gives it only two, well, not really two dimensions, but there's no down in this map. You, there, there is a, a floor that you can not go through. And the idea behind the map is lots of very intense canyon fighting um, where your ships stay low and they use these, uh, I guess they're ravines to, or canyons to move their, to maneuver through and fire at the enemy where you can break out and move up. The downside of this map is that you can just go high and shoot down on your enemy. Uh, and there is really no cover for them apart from behind these these tall walls. So if you have a very powerful railgun fleet and good spotters, you can just back up as far as you want and just bombard your enemy from far away. The capture points are spread out in a star pattern. Um, you basically got two kind of safe ones uh, near your spawn. Although I would say just looking at the layout here, D and B are very low down on the map, even though D is up here, it's got this cliff face to protect it. A is very, very open. 
E is very difficult to capture, especially if your enemy has gone high, it has basically no cover, and C requires you going up, over, and down if you start on red spawn, which means it'll take, probably take a little while to, to get to. Um, there is also this, this sort of animated base of launching um, expanse style ships, which is pretty cool to see. There's a lot of cool um, features on this map. I foresee this map getting banned pretty quickly because there's a lot of concern already within the community that it will just be dominated by railgun battleships or railgun, um, well, and anything that has long range fire would, would be in a good position to go up high, spot the enemy and shoot at them. You might end up with some cool slug matches. The idea behind this map is really, really cool. I just don't know if in practice it's something we're going to see a lot of. But that is the seven maps available to this tournament. We've got Silent Citadel, Avora, The Belt, Pillars, Event Horizon, Cicada, and Luna. If I had to make a uh, sort of a guess about what will come up most often, I think we'll see a lot of games on Pillars and Cicada, and then maybe a few of the other ones mixed in if you want to try them out. It is a round robin tournament, so there will be a lot of battles. Every round, everybody will, by the end of the tournament, everyone will have fought everyone else. I won't be casting all of these games, I'm just not available at the right times because I'm in Australia, but I will do my best to catch the, cast the ones that I can. I think it'll be really interesting to watch, and I'll be streaming those hopefully live on YouTube, uh, and then I'll probably make videos from them later on as well. So I hope you find this interesting. I just wanted to give an overview of the maps that are available in the tournament. Uh, just to recap as well, the tournament is a 6,000 point tournament. Most games, each team plays 3,000 points, so 6,000 points is a big jump up, and I think that will present quite a large challenge to the players. There's a lot of micro involved in keeping all of those different task groups together. Um, I think a fear or an interesting thing to see is will mass corvettes with loads of missiles be the primary way of winning these, these fights, or will someone come up with something more interesting with maybe some Mark 64s or rail guns or beam weapons? I'm really excited to find out, but for now, Thank you very much for watching this video and hopefully I'll, you'll, I'll see you for the tournament as it goes on. Catch you later.